Evening, and you're very welcome to the Leitrim GA podcast here on FinalWhistle.ie. It's been a busy enough week, despite the the small number of fixtures. They were action packed through the last couple of days. Of course, the weather today almost washed out the ladies' senior football final. It definitely had an effect on the quality of football on view in the match. But uh, we'll talk about that more anon in terms of Glencar Manor's third consecutive senior women's ladies ladies football championship title in the county we'll hear from some of their players uh, vice captain leo fox as well as Eva go martin while jerry hickey their manager has a chat with us as well after the game we'll also catch up with the ladies chairperson kathy butler later in the show but first we want to take a look back at the weekend's actions in terms of the men's football across the county and of course it was intermediate weekend uh, two semi-finals yesterday in the intermediate football championships all the results of the weekend across all the grades down below on the screen as you're watching but of course two games that took most of the attention yesterday were of course those two intermediate semi-finals between Ahm Sheelan and Kiltubbert in the first game and Alan Gales and Anna Duff in the second game people were expecting two fairly tight games in the end not two great spectacles of football and not that tight either in both circumstances. They might look a little bit tight on the scoreboard, but very one-sided in both of the games, particularly in the second half of that Anna Duff game. We're going to be chatting to Terence Reynolds of Ockham Sheelan, whose side now face into a, a final appearance in two weeks' time. And we'll also hear from Dylan Keane of Anna Duff ahead of their uh, 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 qualification for the final and his thoughts on that. Uh, well, that's maybe where we'll start today's show. And let's maybe jump straight into the conversation I had with uh, Dylan Keane earlier today uh, about the game yesterday and his thoughts on how it all went. Joining us now is fullback for Anna Duff, who of course sealed their place in the intermediate semi-final in two weeks' time. Uh, yesterday, Dylan Keane, Dylan, very welcome back to the programme. I know we had you on in one of the early editions, uh, but it's... Uh, Kind of a nice situation to have you back into the county final. You got to be happy with that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, cheers, Bethany. First of all, for having me back on, and yeah, definitely delighted to be back in a in a county final in two weeks' time. Talk us through. I suppose we we we'll talk about yesterday's game in a few minutes, but maybe the whole season so far. Uh, if we go cast our minds back, you got to that final in twenty twenty. It wasn't played till a couple of weeks before last year's championship, and then you have to deal with all that kind of emotion of coming straight back in two weeks after you've lost the previous year's final it's been a bit of a roller coaster for it up over the last 15 months since then but what has the path been under joe cox for the last year and a half yeah i suppose as you said there like it was a, it was a change of circumstances in 2020 when we initially got the final and then it was postponed due to due to i suppose we know what but then we had a change in management and i suppose with joe structure that he came in and a lot of us from kind of my age group the whole way down we've worked with joe and uh, through under 13s under 15s and 17s or whatever previous grade used to be known as uh, the whole way through so it was kind of a seamless transition to have joe in and i suppose touching on those age groups joe was always about just kind of building upon youth and i have seen kind of team sheets yesterday it's been kind of a, a change in names and, and circumstances over the last couple of years we just been as i was trying to build the club as a whole more so and and like many clubs, I suppose the adult team and men's team at the, at the top is usually what teams look up towards. Uh, and it's just been about building the, the, the curve the whole way through. And I think that's led us back to a county final. Yeah, in terms of, I suppose, the development in the, the club area over the last few years, a lot of new people into Drummond. And enough, of course, I'm sure Borna Kula picked up a couple of players, but and it yeah. seemed to have been the main beneficiary of that over the years. Um, how key is it to have those? Those youngsters coming through over the last decade or so into we're now starting to see break into first teams uh, for both the men's and the women's sides in the club. Yeah, it, it's it's massive and it's not to be under underlooked and massively. If you go up there any kind of Saturday morning and see the academies, like the numbers up there is ridiculous. You could be getting up to hundred plus, and that's that's where it all stems from. That's where we learned our curve at the very beginning. That's where I started out at under sevens and eights, and that's where you grow the love for football and it's just a product and production line the whole way through. And, and as you said there, like. You look at the team sheet from yesterday and, and on the bench and stuff that there's names there that might have been there mightn't have been there two or three years ago but that's what's going to build upon us and you're not relying on the same few kind of older generations i, I suppose from my point of view i'm kind of one of the elder statesmen on the team now but that kind of production line is coming through and it just drives you on a training and, and having these young lads kind of pushing you and keeping you on your toes i suppose us, us older lads I think Ray Cox might uh, have a little battle with you for that name yet. You have a decade or so to catch up on Ray. Yeah. In, in terms of, I suppose, the season so far, though, I, I know I saw you, I think, over in Ahawillan in a league game early in the year, and yeah. you were very impressive that day. And 
you, you've had some nice flashes of, of, of really good performances this year. And then there's been the odd hiccup or two as well. A couple of injuries haven't helped. I know Hugh Moylan hurt, hurt himself. I think he um, damaged his arm early in the year. Yeah. There was another couple of injuries floating around as well. Conor Reynolds missed a couple of games. And that hasn't seemed to knock you off your stride at all. It's just been consistently getting through the championship. Yeah, I suppose as, as you just based there, like the, the league was probably a massive learning curve for us. And, and from the outset, I suppose no one kind of gave us much of a hope to stay in Division 1. But we kind of looked at it upon building our own structure, building a platform for what we want to push towards their intermediate grade. And, and, you know, I suppose when you look through teams previous years, you would have relied on the likes of you and Connor and stuff like that. But it, it allowed other lads to come in and you see the likes of Caelan quickly in goals there. Frank Chandler yesterday had a super game at corner back. You have Dan Boskets in the middle, you know, J.O. coming in at corner forward. And, and lots of lads pushing on. So that kind of Division 1 uh, platform in that league gave us, a, 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 I suppose, a base to build upon and give them, you know, really, really tough football experience. And, and kind of that's going to stand to us massively going into the intermediate grade. And it's kind of, I suppose, you know, playing at that higher standard, what you may, you may call, kind of gave us a little bit of a driving force in the intermediate championship. And it's kind of stemmed us to where we are today. In terms of, I suppose, yesterday's game, as we talk here on, on Saturday, Sunday, early evening, afternoon. Um, yeah. People kind of fancied Alan Gales coming into that. You would have been the underdogs in most neutrals' eyes going into the game yesterday. Yeah. All nip and tuck for the first half. It wasn't a great game of football, but a blistering start to the second half. And you just seem to... They, they don't answer to what you produced in that first 10, 15 minutes of the second half that really kind of sealed that victory for you. What was it about the preparation coming into the game that kind of led that performance from you? Or maybe it was a halftime team talk from Joe. I don't know. Yeah, so I suppose well, going into as underdogs is nothing kind of new towards us. We're kind of always pushed down, but that's what we loved. And I suppose over the years, and has always been built upon you know work rate, and, and that's kind of one of our mainstays throughout the, the team is work rate, work rate. And I suppose we knew what from Shambo haven't played them a couple of weeks ago. We're going to bring um, obviously, yeah, we'll make them the best first half, and, and especially when they got the goal, kind of their tails were up. But we knew we got a chance to come in at, at halftime, reset, kind of got our structure and plan back in. And, and so it was that blistering kind of start to the second half. We got the right the goal at the right time. And then I think maybe, I don't know if it was the second or third goal, it was kind of a long ball in. And that just stemmed the, the, the tide in our, t- in, in our favour and, and kind of we just drove on. But I suppose if you look throughout the, the whole team there yesterday, everyone was just driving each other on. There was no kind of, you know, drop standards. We just want to keep pushing on and, and just work great. And we, we knew we had lads coming in off the bench. And, and I suppose it's not just about the 15 that, that started there yesterday. You know, it was a panel of 20 and a panel of 30. And there's lads, you know, the junior A's had a very good win last weekend. And that's just driving the force on. So the lads that are on the first 15 know that they can't drop that standard or, or else they'll be sitting on the sideline. How important is it to have that squad culture where it's not just about the lads starting? We see so many teams really push on. They lose a player or two to injury or, or a card and all of a sudden they really, really struggle to fill those gaps. You don't seem to have had that problem at intermediate level this year. No, and I suppose that's that's been a massive stay. It is, I suppose, the, you know, the first fifteen always gets the kind of maybe limelight when it, when it starts, but it is a panel of 30, 35, 36. Like we're very blessed, I suppose, since COVID times for lads working at home and, and the lads at college or working kind of staying home. We've been able to build a base of kind of thirty five, thirty six players, and it's great to see out of train every kind of Tuesday and Thursday and whatnot. And that is the driving force. You know, we're lucky ones that do get the jerseys one to fifteen, but it's gone past the stage of the years where we're not relying on like likes of Ray or Shawnee Matt to kind of deliver deliver us over the line like we've seen yesterday. Kenny jumped up, J.O. came on, Sean Quigley, you know, these lads are just kinda of up on the performances and it's you know, it's a credit to the boys maybe that aren't getting on the first fifteen that are driving them on. And you know, at the very end of the day it's it's for it's for the parish, it's for the community, it's not just any kind of one person's name on the on the on the sheet. Of course, two weeks to go to the final. What's What's the final preparations looking like for yourself now? Yes, well, so, so well, I suppose we haven't really kind of thought too much of it. I know that's kind of maybe a political answer, but we just got over a, a tough battle yesterday. I suppose we'll regroup now during the week and just make sure that the bodies are right, first of all. Um, like I suppose you're not going to do an awful amount of kind of work in the next two weeks. It's just been kind of getting obviously a little bit of grips to, to see what Ackman Sheelan are doing. I know can I watched maybe five or, five or ten minutes yesterday. Kind of see how they map out and kind of just, I suppose, focus on, our, on ourselves massively, first of all, um, getting lads back into the movement and, and just getting a clean build. You know, enjoy the obviously build up because I suppose well, we're lucky enough we've had a couple of finals in the last two or three years. But, you know, it's a massive occasion for not just us, but the, the whole community, you know, drum, drum, nah, and off. Um, to build on that, you know, it's a massive experience. Um, and a couple of lads there that are kind of going to their first, their first final. So it's just about, you know, getting back to basics with training and getting the bodies right and, and looking forward to the occasion. You kind of touched on it there, but what's different about this side that maybe 15, 16 months ago in the previous intermediate final, what's the different uh, gravy this time around compared to where you were in, in that final against Cork Lettrick uh, 18 months ago, 16 months ago? 
Yeah, so I, I suppose it's it's just it's I think it's a kind of a new lease of life in, in the whole team. I, you know, that younger generation comes along and you know, I suppose they mightn't have the, the, the fear factor or you know, they don't have the kind of um you know, experience of losing finals so much, but so so they're driving us on massively and it's just, it's just getting a great buzz around the place. Um, you know, everyone is working hard for each other, you know, there's a there's a massive, massive panel there. And you see it the whole way through the club. Like I know he's touching base, but that under thirteens, I know they were in a, in a semi final today. The junior is in the final next week. The ladies are in a final or semi final in, in in two weeks. Um, so there's just a massive, massive buzz around the place, and it just kind of feeds in at, at grassroots, and that leads up the whole way up to us at intermediate level. And I think that just kind of you know steamrolls us the whole way into the final in terms of you know we're just carrying that kind of wave, and and there's no kind of pressure on us. You know we're just building for 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 hopefully a successful future. Of course, the uh, semi or the final take place. We we guessed two weeks today, uh, but of course that to be confirmed by the CCC yeah. in due course. But you would imagine it'll be the Sunday afternoon in Park Sean uh, in two weeks' time. Um, your personal trainer in your in your day job, what can yeah. be done at this stage? All the strength and conditioning is that you're going to get done is probably done at this stage. But what can you do in that last 13, 14 days as you build up to that game to make sure you're in your your peak? I uh, suppose condition going into that match. Yeah, so without giving away too many tips and tricks, I suppose. Um, I'm well, I suppose well, yeah. as well, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't want to give anything away. But uh, no, I suppose, as I said there, it's, it's it main stage is just making sure that all the bodies are right, first of all. You know, as they will touch base Tuesday or Wednesday, we never get back training. Make sure we've no niggles, injuries. And it's just about looking after yourself, not obviously mind yourself too much with regards, um, you know, under training or anything like that. But, you know, there's not going to be any major fitness work done if you haven't kind of built up the, the standards by now. You're not going to improve massively. It's just about enjoying the experience today, enjoying getting together with the lads for the next, you know, probably only four or five sessions left in the year. Uh, just looking after the bodies, you know, looking after your food, your sleep, and, and just kind of enjoying the process and build up towards it. Well, you didn't quite answer my question there, but I like it. Uh, if people like want to get those come. answers, they got, they got to pay it. the big bucks. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and by the way, Javier, you might as well shout that out as well. It's uh, DK Fitness, right? Or is that correct? What's uh, your yeah, so, Instagram? Uh, yeah. Uh, Instagram handles and all that. Yeah, DK Personal yeah. Training uh, for any inquiries. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, obviously, walking the walk as well as talking the talk as a coach. Uh, in terms of the next two weeks, um, you're going into the final again, probably based on, even though you finished higher in the table at the end, Ogden Sheelan will probably come into this as favourites, uh, but you've kind of upset that apple cart already. Uh, are you happy enough to go in maybe a slight, just slight underdogs into the final? <laughs> yeah, so I suppose you can, you can read it from, from either way. Like, um, I suppose we're happy just to be in the final, first of all. And then kind of based off experience with Ogden Sheelan, you know, we've played them probably in a couple of league games or championship games the last couple of years, and they've always had the upper hand. Uh, I suppose form book goes out the window when it comes to championship final, final day. I know that's, again, political answer, but... It's going to come down to just just hard work, determination, grit that that's going to get us across the line. You know, and uh, making sure I said like everyone is just in flying form, flying fish, and whoever wants the most in the day, it doesn't make a difference what scores were against previous teams or how we got here. You know, no one will remember kind of you know group stages or whatnot. It's it's just all that happens on the day. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to it. And yeah, underdogs are our are, are favourites. I won't, won't mind either way. Well, listen, uh, congratulations on reaching the final and uh, we'll have all eyes peeled on Park Sean in two weeks' time just to see Most how you get on. Dylan, thanks so much for joining me. Cheers, Brett. Thanks for having me. Dylan Keane there chatting to us about uh, his side's victory in that semi-final yesterday. They now wait two weeks to face Ockna Sheelan in, we, we presume to be Park Sean, on the Sunday afternoon. Uh, that would be today, two weeks, so it would be the 23rd of October. Of course, they have opponents in that particular game. And after the match on Saturday afternoon, uh, Seamus Gallagher caught up, sorry, apologies. Uh, Seamus Gallagher caught up with uh, Terence Reynolds, the manager of Ockham Sheelan, to hear from his point of view about how he felt the game went, uh, their victory over Kiltubbert. I have with me uh, Terence Reynolds, manager of the successful Loch Ness Sheelan team. First of all, Terence, congratulations. You're in a county final. Um, I suppose for the neutral out there, it was a disappointing game. Not for Loch Ness uh, As I said, you're through to a county final. You are much the better team. You must be delighted with with the win, anyhow. Well, I thought it was a brilliant game, Seamus. I know. <laughs> That's no, what I said neutral no, now. No, yeah. no, no. It was, you know, semi finals are about getting over the line. Yeah, and I know. Two teams are coming in to a semi-final and they've put a lot into the season. So obviously there's going to be a bit of nerves. There's no quarter asked nor given. Everything is on the line. You're one step from county final. So there'll be mistakes will be made and then there'll be players that will be playing with caution. So they're often not a great game, you know. Yeah. Uh, they're often very close. But we're delighted, delighted to be on the end of it, the right end of the result. 
you got a great start, a goal and a point up, you know, very early on. Um, but Kiltober can't use that as an excuse. They had plenty of time to get back into the game, but they're, they're, they never really got back into the game. No, they never, they, they never got into the game. We, we, we focused on, on trying to win the break ball around the middle of the field. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought we did that really well in the first half. They never really got a chance. Now, look, at, they did hit the post um, and a couple of close shaves, but we felt we controlled it well around the middle third, so they never got really a platform to be consistently coming at us, you know? Um, I noticed there in the second half, was it, you took off Fintan Fitzpatrick. I know he was injured the last day. Uh, was that a kind of a safety precaution, or has he is he still carrying a he bit still, of an injury? He, he, he wasn't on the hundred percent. He yeah. wasn't one hundred percent. And you know, we looked at the clock. There's fifteen minutes to go. We were, I think, eight points up at the time, and we were we weren't really under trying to thought, look at, you know, you, you t- try and take an extra bit out yeah. of him. You're, you're on the cusp of a county final. It was a, it was a decision we don't like having to make. But we just felt the averages that the law of average at the time dictated that we were probably going to see the game yeah. out. Now look at when he's on the pitch, I think on a shield and are a way better team than we are when he's not on it. Yeah. But we had Keane Salmon in the wings and it's great to have him back. And in fairness, Keane he, he, he fisted a great chance, it just came off the post, which would have buried the game altogether. So we feel yeah. we have options on the bench to come in and do a job too. So uh, just a couple of minutes' time, the second semi final, they can go and relax and yeah. watch it. So, look, we sit, we sit back and watch it. Any preference, Alan well, Gales or Alan They're both off? good sides. You yeah. know, they're both, you know, Alan Gales uh, coming down from senior, they want to obviously get back up again. They're a young outfit, uh, they've got a point to prove as well uh, um, under, under James Flynn. Then, Anna Duff under Joe playing Division One football. They got close over the last three, four seasons to getting out of intermediate. It's a very competitive competition. Uh, they will be going all guns blazing. So two tough teams Could get, go to anyway. a final, get to a final though, we have to worry about our performance. And if we can get our performance to a very, very high level, then uh, that's all we can do. Uh, you know, you can try and control it. Can we yeah. control them? No. Can we control the referee? No. But we can control our own display and our own preparations. And that's all we're focused on now. Well, I'll let you go. I know you want to get out there. Enjoy the second semi-final and best of luck in the final. Thanks, Seamus. Forgot to unmute. I keep doing that. Um, Terence Reynolds there chatting about uh, his side's uh, success on Saturday and their progress into a uh, intermediate semi-final. Uh, congratulations to him and his Upton Shield and side, and of course a, a great final uh, in prospect at the intermediate level in two weeks' time. We expect uh, we're not going to preempt any decisions of the CCC, but that is what the master fixture list would tell us is about to happen. Um, two pretty poor. Uh, games, I suppose semi-finals are just there to be won. Uh, nobody's that worried about how well you play as long as you get through them, and both sides should put up some spectacle of football in two weeks' time. So here's hoping that's going to be an absolute cracker. And enough looking to obviously get back uh, to the promised land. They uh, missed out in 2020, which was played in 2021, as you heard me talk about with Dylan Keane earlier in the show. Uh, plenty of for them to be excited about, but up Sheelan, and um, rumours of mentioned in the preview on the website during the week but a lot of rumors about a lot of people emigrating at the end of the championship it's a sad day for any club when anyone leaves but a bit of a mass exodus in upper and expected over the winter so this could be their last chance to get up to senior and um, before the, this team that they have at the moment this very impressive side could be broken up over the winter months. Uh, the other scores from across the games, of course, Alfred Sheelan and one eight to six points to Alfred Sheelan, uh, added up 313, Alan Gales 2-9, the official scores in those particular games. I'll put them back up on the screen here as well. Uh, some other games played over the weekend, Balna Glare and Mohol met in the intermediate relegation final. Mohol struggled all year and they struggled again in that particular game. Balna Glare is 6-11, Mohol, one goal, one point. Uh, heavy defeat again for Mohol today. They go back down to the junior championship, which they won 12 months ago. Don't be surprised if they're back competitive at that grade really, really soon as well. Glencar Manor at 10 points. Melvin Gales 2-7 in the junior A championship relegation battle. So disappointment for Glencar Manor. Melvin Gales after relegation from senior last 
week have redeemed themselves slightly um, with staying in the junior grade for next year. They'll be relatively happy with that, given the effect, events of seven days ago where they lost out so cruelly uh, six minutes into injury time against Drummer Hare. In terms of the ladies' football, loads of games this weekend as well. The two intermediate semi-finals played yesterday. St. Mary's 2-10, Drum Kieran 1-4. As expected, St. Mary's, they top the table. They find a place in the final. And then it may be a little bit of a surprise, although it was a coin toss either way. Mohol winning out against St. Bridget's at uh, 16 points to 2-9. St. Bridget's with a healthy lead coming into the dying stages, but Mohol just kept that scoreboard ticking over, and they ended up winning by a single point in that particular clash. St. Mary's and Mohol, they meet in the senior final men's next week. They'll meet in the ladies' intermediate final the weekend after that, all to be confirmed in due course. But, of course, all of the ladies' football in the county, the eyes were on one place this afternoon, and that was... Oh, before we get to the senior final, uh, I missed one game here. St. Francis, they survived in the senior grade. 3-7 to 2-8 the final score as they beat Drum Hare by two points to keep their place in senior football. I think for the fourth consecutive year, they'll be quite happy with that. They did have some really good uh, patches through the season. Uh, they were leading against Glencar Manor, who won today's championship in, in their game a couple of weeks ago. So there's not a lot wrong with St. Francis, and they will be hoping to improve as they go forward next year. Drum here, unfortunately for them, back down to the intermediate grade for next season. The senior final, of course, was where all the eyes were this afternoon. And we're going to hear from some of the participants in that. But it started out at a helter-skelter rate. Mern Devaney with a goal inside the first 15 or 16 seconds of the game. And it was looked like it was going to be Manor's Day from very early on. But Ballon Moore hadn't read the script. And they turned a five-point deficit after 12 or 13 minutes into a five-point lead at the break. Uh, some really inspired play from a couple of their forwards. Uh, found the back of the net. Uh, Lily Byrne with a nice goal there as well in the middle of all of that. Uh, but it was a solid team performance from Ballinamore. But they did have the benefit of a very, very strong win. Manor came out, and to be honest, the first minute of the second half kind of decided the contest. Two goals from Mern Devaney in the space of 35 seconds in the second minute of that um, first uh, second half was game over uh, as far as we're concerned. A one-point lead. Balnamore did manage to get level, but never quite managed to get a foothold back into the game. They did have their chances, though, but it wasn't to be. Two long-range uh, efforts for points, I think, uh, dropped short and just ended up in the back of the net from Alva Clancy, who, of course, made an appearance from her residence in Dubai. She came home for the weekend. Uh, we don't see that too often in Leitrim Gaelic games, but an international transfer last minute and Alva came in. Now she has been obviously a key member of that squad for many, many years, but she came in and was uh, a huge influence in that winning of that game at the weekend. But a very, very impressive performance from a, a, a new look Glencar Manor side really compared to the team that's won the championships over the last two years. A lot of new faces in that team really, really contributing to a, a solid team performance. But of course, Mern Devaney, 3-4 from her. What a performance. What a player. We've talked about her at length on the show. She's featured on our team of the week. And I'm not going to give the game away for later in the week when we announce this round's team of the week. But I'd be amazed if she's not on it after her performance today. Hugely inspirational. Picked up the player of the match award as well. And, of course, as co-captain with Leo Fox, did pick up the trophy for the club for the third time in a row. Really, really impressive uh, from Manor Hamilton today. They'll be quite happy, and I'm sure there's none of them watching it now, but they will probably pick it up on a replay uh, later in the week. Let's hear from some of the participants in that game. We're going to start off first with Leah Fox, the co-captain of the side. Aoife Glenn Martin will be joining then, and the manager, Jerry Hickey. Uh, we're back in a minute after all of these. Of Glencar Manor, it's uh, it's a great day for the club. Three wins on a bounce. Uh, must be happy. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, it's hard to explain, to be honest. Uh, it's three in a row, like, but this is a totally different team. Like, there's like girls here that didn't kick football in five or six years that are starting there today, and like, unbelievable. Like, it's I said, it's three in a row, but it's one in a row for us. But our club is three in a row, so it's unbelievable. Like, one's good, two's good, but. Unbelievable. Talk us through the game, of course. Uh, Murren had the ball in the back of the night after 20 seconds. She did, yeah. And then, then a few minutes went by, and I think you're starting to do well. Um, yeah, we started, we were okay up until every 12 or 13 minutes. Then it went all downhill. You were, I think we had 1 4, and they had a, two points. They could have had 2 5 and 1 4 at half time. Like, we didn't score in, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 minutes. Like, and we were kind of getting worrying. Like, there was no doubt about it. But I think we all had belief in ourselves. Like, this year, like other years, we've played great like we'll win games we're playing great in but not games that were 
like not playing well in, but I think we've really worked on it this year. Like we weren't a few weeks ago against Kiltober, we didn't play for maybe the guts of 40 minutes and still came out with a point. So same here today. We weren't we aren't happy at halftime, but we knew there was more in it. Talk about the conditions because they played a huge part, particularly in the first half. Um, challenging for anybody. How did you find it? Uh, yeah, it's tough. Like you kind of have the ball around the D, but then you don't want to like the shot's on, but you don't want to take it because it's not going to go over realistically. Um, as I said, we had 1-4 against the wind after about 10 or 12 minutes. We weren't doing too bad and then we didn't score. But I think like five points, the lads were saying this was half time, don't be, like, don't be thinking that the wind is going to change the game. It'll be in your favour in the second half. Like, it'll help us, but it's not going to be the wind of the game. But um, yeah, it was very difficult in the first half. But then you can't be too disappointed to go in four points down. Like, it could have been a lot worse. No little panic when you came out in the second half and for the first five minutes the wind was blowing in the opposite direction? No. <laughs> we, got two, we got two goals, we weren't too worried. <laughs> Well, maybe the wind helped in those well, as well. Yeah, yeah. In terms of uh, where you go to from here, obviously, Connacht Club Championship to come. I've asked everyone else about it. Uh, your own thoughts in terms of that. Is that just bonus territory now, or uh, uh, is it, can you do some damage in that competition? Yeah, I don't see why. I think we have uh, an 80s now. An 80s is one side go yesterday. I don't think it's them, but I don't actually know. Is it the quarterfinal or semi-final or what is it? But, um, yeah, definitely. Like, why not? We got to a Connacht final last year. We're two points down at half time, and then just be kind of wilted. Um, but it's kind of a bit like a bit of regret last year. Like we could have been closer to Clumber, and I know they're an unbelievable team. Like, but we could have been closer. And you're not going to get any better by just going out and say we're happy with three in a row. That's it. Like we want to push on and kind of now. Absolutely. Well, listen. Yeah, you look like you're shivering there from the <laughs> wet. And uh, I let you get back to the celebrations. Thanks, I'm sure the, the cold won't affect you for the rest of the not evening. Not tonight, no. <laughs> uh, Got to be happy with that. Three championships back to back to back. Um, thoughts after the game. Yeah, I'm absolutely delighted. It was a tough slog out there, but thankfully we made it through in the end. Um, yeah, no, it feels great. It feels absolutely amazing. And credit to Ballinamore, they, they put in all the effort as well. Um, it was just tough conditions, tough day, and luckily we came out on top, yeah. Bit of a roller coaster, right from the first couple of, yeah. of minutes. You played that lovely ball into Burns. She found the back of the net in the first 20 seconds of the game. and. And then half time, you're five points behind yeah. to finish and win the game by that margin again later on. It was just what was going through your mind as the game developed? I just, it was tick for tat the whole game. I thought, you know, it could have honestly gone anyway. Um, yeah, the conditions just made it 10 times harder to, you know, get a ball right. So you just had to kick it and hope for the best. But yeah, luckily now, thankfully, um, we got the scores that we need them. and. Yeah. A bit lucky as well. A couple lucky of balls right. just dropping yeah. maybe in that maybe miss, missed points as opposed to shots yeah. on goal. Yeah. But they thought they all count at the same at the end of the day. In, in terms of I suppose the, the build up to this, obviously um having a, the distraction maybe of, of someone coming in from abroad who's hasn't been around for the last couple of games. Yeah. Alva came in, uh, contributed really well on the score sheet. How important is it to have players of that quality when you get to games at this stage? Oh it's so important and Everyone on the team is quality, you know, we that was actually today was our ninety third outing as a team from the beginning of the year. Um yeah, the the lads reminded us the other day. So it's it takes a lot of sessions and it takes hard work, you know. Um you can't get anywhere with talent unless you have hard work and that's what our girls put in. So yeah, all all 40, 46 girls I think were there today and each one of them has put in so many training sessions over the past few months and the lads have, have done great training with us as well, so it all counts in the end. In terms of what comes next, of course, Connacht Club Championship, a bit of a baptism of fire, baptism of fire last year, but you've got uh, experienced this kind of success at Connacht level before, at intermediate level. Uh, what can Manor bring to that now over the next couple of weeks when they go into that championship? I think we need to just turn around and focus on it straight again, you know. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, no, we, we can't just take, you know, we have to just take it as comments, you know. Um, we we are lucky to have the experience in it the last two years. Um, you know, last year we, we fell short with Kalkan Clamburn, but yeah, we're ready to put in. We're ready to put in the effort again and just have our fun tonight and then get back to it next again, you know. Absolutely, so. well, I think the fun has already started here <laughs> yeah. with some of the distractions coming in. But Aoife, listen, thanks very much for having a chat with us. Uh, well done again today. Thank you very much. Uh, county champions, third time on the trot, first time for yourself on the sideline. You got to be happy with the, as the girls celebrate in the background. You got to be happy with the result today. Of course, any day that you win a county final, no matter what way or how you win it, you know it's it's fantastic. And like, what a bunch of players! Like, very privileged coming into this group at the start of the year because they've achieved such success in the past. 
you know, it's it's a hard task to take on. And myself and James stood up to it. And look at, we haven't lost a game so far this year. And hopefully this journey can continue. Blistering start today. Had the ball in the back of the net after 15 minutes. You go on to score five more. Um, some of them may be a little bit fortuitous. I'm sure I might not say she was shooting for a point. Um, it was goals that won that game today. Of course it was. Like, sure, you look at the scoreboard there, 5-6 to 2-10, you know. And you wouldn't be happy on other days with that return. But, you know, today at work conditions were, you know, really, really difficult. And the girls dug deep. Like, we went in five at half time down five at half time you know and found them more with their heads up so we got the reaction straight away in the second half that we needed and the girls dug deep and dug deep but found more did not give up right up till i suppose like seven minutes of injury time they did not give up but fairness tower girls like they just they stood up to the task they answered the questions and they got the result out of it. What was the mood like at halftime in the restroom? What was the... What was yeah, the... I, I, I wouldn't like to repeat my words or James's words, but, you know, you know yourself. Look, at, at, at times, these girls can make it difficult for the management team. And then there's other days where we've come in and, Brefity, I know you were down against the St. Joseph's when we played St. Joseph's down at home. And, like, we didn't know what to say to them that day at halftime because they set a standard for themselves that day. We probably haven't got back to that standard yet, but at least we have a chance again to go again. In, in terms of, I suppose, the impact as well of uh, Alva Clancy, I know there was rumours during the week circulating that she was coming home. She came home, she came on after maybe 18, 20 minutes of the game, uh, scored those two goals you mentioned about, but she gave that little bit of maybe stability when it looked maybe like Ballinamore were getting into the ascendancy in the first half. Uh, yeah, look, at Alva's been a big player for this club for a long, long time. And like up there with all the other greats that we have, and she was here for the first round of the championship, then she had to go back to her work in Dubai, and she's after taking holidays to, to get back for the county final. She got her chance, she got in and she made the difference, but look at the girls around her that are helping her out. You know, it's not about Alva, it's not about Myrne, it's not about Leah. You have the likes of Chloe Rooney, you have Rebecca Rooney back there, Eamor Feely, Aoife Gilmer, I could go through the whole squad. Like, we have 44 girls that have played senior football at some stage this year. Like, that's a phenomenal effort. You know, by all of them, they're putting it in three nights a week, and now they've got the result that they deserve. Connacht Championship to come now. What's the uh, the plans? Couple of days to celebrate, and then back into work again. Uh, yeah, look at we couldn't look. For, you know, you couldn't look beyond today. So I suppose once we get tonight and maybe tomorrow out of the way, we're going to be fully focused. You know, and we have to be because these girls have been in a Connacht final. Do they want to get back there? That's the question now. They have to. Have, they have to to ask themselves but we have two weeks to regroup absolutely listen Jerry congratulations three in a row I know you've only been around uh, in depth for the last one but a, a great year and a fine accomplishment uh, bringing this girls to another county championship congratulations thanks very much Jerry Hickey there chatting to me after the senior final today congratulations to Glen Car Manor fine performance fine game actually and it was a real roller coaster as we said at the start of the show five point lead for Manor in the first half five points down at half time and then they just um, just were too strong in that second half. The wind played a factor, but I don't think it was uh, that much of different for either team. The referee it has to be said. Um, player, uh, she came in to manage or to referee that game. I don't have the name to hand. She's Maggie. Um, oh, name. Apologies, Maggie Foy. I think. Uh, Donegal native, living in Drumahair, and really good performance from her. Solid performance. A couple of times people getting frustrated, but I think it was more down to uh, the ladies' rules been implemented properly in terms of contact. And uh, great to see the game played and, and, and officiated and run in such a good spirit on what was an absolutely terrible day in uh, Park Sean McDermott. I think the only person uh, who had a bit of sense was Sarah McLaughlin, the midfielder for Ballinamore, who had the sense to grab the only spare jersey in the kit bag uh, at halftime. She came out with a different number on her, but more importantly, she had a dry jersey for the second half. None of the other players quite managed to grab their hands on a jersey uh, outside of that. But that's where we are uh, for the weekend. We did. We finish up with one chat I had after the game today with uh, the chairperson of the county board. We spoke to Cathy Butler uh, early on in her uh, first season as the chairperson of the LGFA in Leitrim. And today we had a little catch up with her about the season so far. Now that the senior championship at least has drawn to a close, still plenty of action. We'll talk about the, the fixtures once you hear what Cathy had to say to me earlier today. 
chairperson of the LGFA and the county board here in Leitrim. Um, great performance, great teams, great championship this year. And um, I suppose, tell us your thoughts at the end of the season now in terms of the, the senior competitive stuff at least. Absolutely, yeah. Like it's, I suppose the senior championship finished today and we've been treated to well two epic finals over the last two Sundays. Um, end-to-end -end battles and I suppose it's, it's kind of reflective of the competition right throughout in that there were so many really competitive games you know narrow narrow victories and um, narrow narrow defeats on the other side of it and you know really really high quality football and, and that, that was evident today despite the inclement conditions I think the girls served up an absolute feast of football and it as I said last weekend was the same with really titanic battle to the, to the, to the final whistle and but, you know all three teams over the course of the two Sundays should be really proud of themselves. How important is it for the game in the county that, that the standards are, are so universally kind of level in terms of we saw what four or five points between the sides today one point last week Kiltubbard ran uh, Manor to a point as well St Joseph's on their day have beaten those three teams this season as well um, so there's four teams in the county and maybe one or two more intermediate level kind of knocking on the door kind of saying we've got some really good players here it must be an exciting time for the game in the county Absolutely and I think um, it's, it's, been, it's been so competitive and you see that across, across the, the, the three divisions you know, it's similarly in, in intermediate, it was you know nip and tuck, and and teams taking points of each other. Junior competition the same. So like, it's a, it's it's a real. I suppose it's a credit to clubs that the standard is so high across the three divisions, and it's it's fantastic for Leitrim football because it leaves it leaves the county scene as we as we start off on a, a new campaign and a new a new venture, I guess, with new management in a really positive space. Looking at. Looking, you know, forward into the, into the competitions in in 2023. You've kind of preempted my next question, which was last time we spoke, we didn't have a manager in place. We do now. Happy with the appointment? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, really high quality appointment, and it's fantastic. It's really exciting. He's been at a lot of a lot of the games throughout the the championship, and has has seen a lot of a lot of girls that have have have, have caught the eye, and you know, have have he's he's putting you know putting together kind of a, I suppose a um I don't know what to call it you know kind of not necessarily a team right now but uh, there will be obviously open trials and all of that and he's looking at, at previous teams and and players that have stood out across the competition so it's 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 a really positive space and and this was the the message he gave when he met players a couple of weeks ago in in Alan Gale's club rooms was that you know this is a, a clean slate and a new beginning and anyone that wants to be involved can you know can can step up and, and do that actually well listen after a great performance today there's plenty of reasons to be hopeful for the future for Leitrim football and uh, and hopefully we'll be seeing plenty more success uh, at the county level as a result of these girls that are coming through that we saw today. Cathy, thanks very much for your time. Thanks, Brefney. Cathy Butler there, the uh, chairperson of Leitrim LGFA. Um, their season winding down, but still a couple of prizes at adult level to be given out in the ladies' sphere. We'll run through those quickly before we take a look at the men's fixtures next weekend. Uh, Kildra, Gales, Face, Anna Duff, that's Cloon and Gortletra. For those not familiar with the, uh, the the matchups and the amalgamations at uh, at ladies level, they face off in the ladies junior semi final next Sunday at twelve thirty. That game, I think it's in Kiltubbert and Leitrim. Sorry, Leitrim, oh, no, that's game to be confirmed. That the venue to be confirmed. We'll just put the fixtures up here underneath the bottom of the screen. Uh, you'll see them all running across the bottom of the screen. There, uh, Leitrim Gales and Glencar Manor. Uh, Leitrim Gales, of course, their first time. In adult football, they've reached the semi final of the junior championship. They face Glencar Manor in that competition. Glencar Manor, of course, uh, on a high after their uh, celebrations today. They go into that game as, as slight favourites. The other game, it's a coin toss Kielder versus Anna Duff. There was only uh, a point or two between them when they met in the group stages. It's going to be interesting to see who comes out of that game in uh, on Sunday morning. The Leitrim Gales, Glencar Manor, that game is in Kiltubbard. Um, and Kildra versus Anna Duff. Uh, to be confirmed, uh, will be announced during the week. In terms of the men's fixtures next week, we'll talk about the two big ones in a moment, the senior and minor finals. Uh, they take place on Sunday in Abbott Money Park, Sean McDermott. Of course, it's the Newtown Gore Engineering minor final between St. Mary's Kiltard and McDermott Gales. That is uh, an amalgamation of um, of Kiltubbard and Kiltubbard and Ballinamore. Of course, uh, they will face off at... Uh, one o'clock in Avon Money Park, Sean McDermott. While at three, it's the big one. Mohol versus St. Mary's, a repeat of the 2020 final. Uh, I'm not going to pick out individual players because it's too easy to do that, but two of the best sides in the county this year. Uh, what will we expect on Sunday? We'll hopefully get another podcast out this week with a preview purely 
on those two fixtures. But in terms of uh, other fixtures, there's two other junior games being played on Sunday afternoon. 12 o'clock throw-ins in both places in the Junior B Football Championship. Carrie Gallon and Gort Letra, they play a back round of uh, group games. Carrie Gallon currently top of the division, but in a very strange twist of fate, FINA second in the table, guaranteed to progress on points difference. Um, if Gort Letra were to beat Carrie Gallon, the four teams would finish on four points, and it would be Carrie Gallon, regardless of the score, who would be eliminated from that Junior B Football Championship. Of course, that's second teams for all of those sides. But uh, Carrie Gallon in the ascendancy, avoid defeat therein, along with FINA, to the semi finals of the Junior B Championship. And I think it's Alan Gales and Leitrim Gales on the other side of that draw. So a lot of clubs with a bit of interest on their second teams in that particular game. In the Junior C Football Championship, then semi final, Balneglera versus Melvin Gales. They will play off, I think that's. I think that's Junior C Championship. It's uh, coming up underneath us here. My notes not quite clear enough uh, on that one. But um, so some some games as well as the uh, all the attention on Avon Money Park, Sean McDermott. But I'm sure that's where most of the attention will be. Of course, it's live streaming on leitrimga.ie. You can purchase your tickets for that. Uh, and we will, of course, be um, giving live commentary of the game. But a surprise guest joining uh, our commentary team for that particular game. You have to keep your eyes tuned to see who that might be in due course. We'll announce it later in the week. Results and reports and statistics from all the games, of course, available on finalwhistle.ie. Nice short one this week. As I said, we will be back with another episode later in the week, previewing the county senior and minor finals. And uh, we hope you join us for that again too. Uh, for me, I've been breathing early this week. It's been an exciting web game today in the ladies' senior final, despite the results. But I'll be back with you later in the week with uh, a look at what's uh, happening over the weekend with that senior final. Talk to you then.